Well, welcome to our second hot topic, another case of civil society keeping government on its toes as court orders federal government to account for a batch of loot recovered since 1999. The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project will be throwing more light on this as we have been joined by Mr. Kolawale Oluwadari, uh, Deputy Director Serap. They actually instituted that case. Good morning, Mr. Kolawale Oluwadari. Good morning. All right, well, judgment was delivered on July 3rd on this case. President Tinubu ordered, you know, has been ordered to disclose the exact sum stolen by General Sani Abacha from Nigeria through the Ministry of Finance, and then the total amount recovered, all agreements signed on same by former presidents Olusegun Obasanjo, Omar Yaradua, Good Luck Jonathan, and Mohamed Buhari. Tell us, the court gave this administration, this government, seven days to make this information available. Are we looking at today? And what has been done with regards to that order? Has action been taken? Thank you very much. Ordinarily, since the parties were served with all the processes, uh, the parties are the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Justice, uh, it is presumed in law that they are privy to the president and they are privy to the judgment already. But we've taken the extra step of writing to the president and these concerned ministries, uh, forwarding a satisfied true copy of the judgment to them. So the judgment ideally begins, the seven days begins to count from the date of the judgment, since they, I believe the Lord will have participated in the proceedings by the processes they found. But we've taken an extra portion of sending this satisfied true copy of the judgment, along with the request they demand uh, for the president to direct these affected ministries to obey the judgment of court. So what follows next, or what should follow next uh, in um, democracy is that the judgment of court is obeyed, and those details as requested by Sarah, and as ordered by the courts, they are obeyed by all available means to ensure that Nigerians have access to them. It's simply put, that is what should happen, and that's what we expect to have. Today is seven days. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, it was delivered on the third, so it's expected that today you should have at least had that document. Are we correct? Yes, uh, and that's why the apartheid judgment, they even join the use uh, in the suit as well. Uh, and they are presumed to have notice of the judgment, but we have also taken the extra precaution to write. So the seven days are ideally, uh, as far as the court is concerned, begins to count from the 3rd of July. Uh, but we are also waiting for the president. So what we are waiting for is compliance on the part of these agencies with the order of court. So what happens after the seven days? What is the next action that Sarah can take legally? Unfortunately, this is one of those, uh, this, uh, the conquest of dysfunctional democracy or government. I give it, it is not about Sarah doing anything. It should be about the government obeying the of court. And obeying the order of court is very simple. It means that these agencies of government publish the details are ordered by the court. And publishing in this instance, as stated by the FYR, includes using different measures and means. It includes on the on the website of the Ministry of Finance, on the website of the Ministry of Justice, by newsletters, brochures, and every available means government agencies to take uh, to make this information available. So the information is not meant to be made available to sell but to the public and uh, to the Nigerian citizens because the suit itself is predicated on the public interest and is on the behalf of Nigerian citizens in the interest of Nigerian citizens. Who should know how much has come in by way of a how much have been spent and how they've been spent. Don't forget, the citizens of Nigerians are the victims in this instance. Those from children that left Nigeria in the first place, now that they've come back in, the victims should be the main beneficiaries. And um, the victim means started. it should start from knowing how much are coming and how they tend to spend. Okay, uh, well, what, how much has come in and how much has been spent and how it has been spent uh, is something that can be achievable. But 
one of the, uh, the demands, uh, according to the report that we heard that Serap was demanding for, was how much Abacha actually looted. Is that even a possibility? We keep seeing as if every year one, one tranche of it, every year another, another tranche of it coming in that we didn't even know about. Is it possible to know how much was really stolen by the Abacha government? That is possible. But the main focus of the suit is how much has been recovered, mm -hmm. which is very important. Um, when it is important to know how much has been stolen, it is much more important to know how much has been recovered. Because we hear some figures being buried around over time, but that is not enough. We need to know exactly, to the smallest call, how much has been recovered in the various tranches, and how those funds are to be spent. And that also includes the roles Back and other international agencies have played in recovery of those funds. And perhaps whether there are agreements that Nigeria have entered to that ends the Nigerian government on specific way those funds are those spent. Nigerians, they start to know it's what the law says. The Uncut Convention that Nigeria signed up to all clearly states in this instance reparation for the victims of acts of corruption. Every Nigerian is a victim of this looting done by the late the general budget. Now that those folks are coming, the victims naturally should be the should know. And that's where the reparation starts. How much is coming out at the spent who yeah. benefit us in, in those spending. So the focus is on how much is coming now that the spent. And then you would understand that the essence of this kind of advocacy is to ensure principally that these funds do not leave Nigeria the same way they left the first time, ending off in private pockets. Exactly. Nigerians have been curious about how these recovered loots have been spent. Um, we publicly hear of you know their return to Nigeria. We hear for instance in November 2022 we learned that 20 million dollars was returned to Nigeria. In 2020, we heard that $311.7 million was also returned, but then we do not get to hear how they were spent. So this court ruling will put an end to some of the mysteries expectedly if the government will respond to it. Uh, this Abacha loot mystery, many Nigerians are looking forward to it to see. And you have said that you did not go to court just for Sarah, but for the Nigerian masses. Now tell us, um, what you know about the three critical infrastructure projects that the U.S. signed um, with the government that these monies that, when returned, should be channeled into? Do you have any information to eat at all? And is this one of the reasons why you went to court over this matter? We, we went to court because we had requested this information from the government by way of a Freedom of Information request in, in consonance with the Freedom of Information Act, um, Section 39 of the Constitution that guarantees all the things, including those itself, and uh, freedom of expression that is access for It is because we did not get those answers that we ended up in court. And the aim of the Freedom of Information request as part of our advocacy for transparency and accountability is to make government use available funds, uh, public funds, in the interest of Nigerians to better the welfare of Nigerians, whose socioeconomic rights now have been abused over time. There is growing poverty in Nigeria. The NPS National Bureau of Statistics has listed more than 1.3 million Nigerians are poor uh, in its multidimensional report. Inflation is rising. The removal of subsidies has raised the cost of living. The cost of governance has continued to go up, with Nigeria is knee deep in debt. What more indices do we need to show that government must, at this time, more than any other time, prioritize socioeconomic rights of Nigerians? How does this work? We're speaking simply of affordable quality education, affordable water, affordable health care. We're talking of talking of security, and these are provisions of the constitution that has been guaranteed to Nigeria. This is the reason why we have officers elected, public officers elected or appointed in the office. So basically, what Sarah, the, the basis of this advocacy is to ensure that much dead public funds, in this instance by way of our channels, is used for the benefit of Nigeria. So the protest that the government wants to undertake this is not as important as the manner in which those are spent. And we've seen this done over time. 
Government says they've allocated so so amount to education. Government says they've allocated this uh, to security, but we do not see it in real time. It, it doesn't reflect in the reality either by way of infrastructure or economic benefits to the system. And that is why these are going to ensure that we are in forms to prosecute our infrastructural development without recourse to loans and to ensure principally that this again doesn't end up in private pockets. So, so whether this is used for education, for health, or even to cushion the effect of the brightening crunch of the economy, the most important thing is that so, so the economic rights of Nigerians are respected and that we all see government can account against how these funds have been spent. Uh, a major way that these funds can be spent, for instance, is to ensure that our health infrastructure, both at the HFS and the primary levels, and they are developed, take care of Nigerians. And it also means that the various aspects of our education, right from primary to secondary school, is funded enough to afford quality education. But again, it is not enough to talk about sectors, education, resource allocation to the sector. What is most important is to ensure that they are spent the way the law says they should spend, and they do not be in private pockets. We see budgets coming year after year, huge amounts of money. Growing the deficit continues to grow. It does translate, trust it, which is why Nigerians need to ensure that sustain this advocacy to ensure that either this administration or previous administrations, any funds that are coming to Nigeria by way of is monitored and spent and transparency for the benefit of Nigerians. Yeah, I must say kudos to Serap for being so dogged in this fight. Matter of fact, most Nigerians no longer have confidence in NGOs. Well, not all NGOs, some NGOs and some CSOs as much as they have confidence in setup. So kudos to you. But wouldn't it have been so great to have those individual presidents um, who dispensed these monies answer to these questions answer these questions uh, government is continuum there's no doubt but wouldn't it have been more exciting to have these individual presidents who dispense these monies give account of course it, it would have been but the practicality of that is, is the challenge uh, for instance this suit was filed in 2020 and we're having judgment uh, in 2023 um, three years after the suit was filed. This also coupled with the slow pace of justice and administration has also led to these issues. But much more importantly, whether the, those presidents, uh, uh, they are left office or not, is immaterial. The principal parties to this suit are the Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Justice. Those ministries that still exist, they are continuous. Whether they are ministers appointed to them or not, Congress is a continuum. So, we are why the Tinubu administration, for instance, cannot be linked on the obligations of Nigerians for the loans that have been collected by previous administrations. They cannot say they don't have those records. They cannot say uh, that they do not want to hold the keep up Nigerians in on the packet. So, in the same, in the same way, these funds are coming by way of the year since 1999 under many uh, different administrations. But of course, Nigerians, it does not stop these agencies of government, who by important stakeholders, they play the important roles in the recovery and allocation and the expenditure of these funds, by the way. And I'm talking about the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Justice to account for them. So it is not about the presence of the administration, it is about institutions of government. In this instance, the two ministries that are parties to these funds and who played very important roles in the payment of these funds. So in that is not an excuse. They should be able to give account for how much they're coming, how much they spent, and the status of that spending at the time of judgment of court. Yeah, matter of fact, the Minister of Finance had earlier given the excuse that it was unable to account for the requested documents. And, and the, the counsel to the federal government had also said that uh, Serap had no local standing. But you, you persisted. The, the, the court uh, dismissed their arguments and you got uh, judgment. Um, how does it feel to be at this point in this fight? And do you see your victory? Well, the victory of this whole case um, opening the floodgate for more CSOs, Nigerians, who have been accused of having been too docile, to come up and ask government to account for our public wealth. It's um, the, during the suit, and these kind of, the, the delay in the suit has some kind of discouraging effect. And, uh, but, 
fortunately, judgment had been given in this instance. And I'm very happy that the judge could see through the filthy defenses of both respondents in the court. And that is why we have judgment in, in, in this regard. And I do not necessarily think this will open a field of litigation. Uh, the civic space in Nigeria has always been thriving, apart from the various actions of government to stifle and um, restrain the civic space by um, preventing robust engagement. But the Nigerians have been dogged and persistent also, much more like Sarah, in the consistent advocacy for good governance. Some may look more politically, less, more, uh, less uh, team in the governance space, but it's still the same advocacy towards good governance. And I do believe that Nigerians will think, and Nigerians have always been lacking. We are more, more political and we are, we are much more a governance than we used to be up, uh, uh, since 1999. We understand the basic rights of citizens as rights holders and those of those of governors as, as duty bearers. But what we need to do much more, about it, and the hope is that this kind of judgment, Nigerians are able to take this up and further the course of this advocacy. Make sure that questions like these, judgments like these, remain on the front burner of public discourse. That is not separate. If the situation also has influence on the because that is very, very likely. The same question previous administrations have asked of this administration, whether during the light of this administration or when it has come, that people can ask how much has come in and how much has been spent. So this judgment is another one of those the victories for democracy and for the situation of ours. But more importantly, the, the executive that um, obligated to obey this judgment in forgeries of transgress and accountability, good governance and the third of democracy. Okay, we, we do hope that when the government comes and tells you that um, the money was used for trader money, the money was used for school feeding program, the money was used for uh, Angkor Boras program, you can be able to scrutinize even a little bit more and make sure uh, that the money they claim to have spent was really spent that way or you take it a step further. We'd like to thank you this morning. It's a, it's a pity this is how much we can take on the show this morning. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Okay, we were talking with uh, Barista Kolawole Oluwadari, Deputy Director of CERAP, and he was uh, telling us about uh, the court judgment that has just been gotten by CERAP for the government to be transparent enough to tell us what monies have come in from their bachelor loot and how the monies have been spent. But this is where we'll draw the curtain for today, except for the quote of the day. The quote of the day will be coming. Um. <laughs> okay, or maybe I should just give, <laughs> just give it. Just give it. Uh, sometimes the people around you won't understand your journey. They do not need to. It's not for them. This is from Yobed Botha uh, advising us. Advise yourself. My name is Nyamugu. And I am Maureen. Do have a splendid day and thanks for being with us.